I'm be, I'm on the call with Kurt Smith, and my name is Wendy Lovejoy. Both of us are directors at Georgia Rea, but we are also, like everybody else, real estate investors, and we've learned a lot from the way we do business, and so we've come together to do what's called a yellow campaign coaching, and tonight's topic is about mindset, okay? The goal is to get everybody to understand this is a 90-day program. It's a three-month program. And Kurt and I have a goal to show you the correct way of doing your yellow letter campaign. However, you, you don't want it to stop at 90 days. Commit to doing this for at least a year. Because once you commit and you see that you are going to start systematically getting buyers um, and motivated sellers, both of your leads are going to grow, your buyers and your sellers, if you stick it out and you continue doing this after the program is over. Our goal, again, is to show you how to do it correctly and then have you continue to keep going. You, I don't want you to think like it's a, once you start the yellow letter campaign, you're going to have so much success with one mail out that it, you, you, you don't have to do it again. Um, so tonight we really want to get your mindset ready for doing this and committing it to it long term, three to five years. Um, you're going to see results within the 90 days. Um, it's not, I, I can only guarantee that if you do the work, you will see results. That's, that's the guarantee I can give you. I can't guarantee you're going to make $10,000 overnight or 1000 or 50000 You have to put in the work. Everybody's results are not going to be exactly the same. But if you put in the work, you're going to build different muscles, different habits, and you will see results. Um, Kurt, can you share a little bit about mindset and, and anything that you feel they need to focus on at this time? Okay, I'm assuming that Kurt may not have come in on the asterisk side. So while we're getting Kurt to come back on, um, the goal again is to get everybody to just focus on this is long term. You want to get into a habit. Pick a night, pick a morning, pick a day where you're going to make it a habit of writing your letters in the beginning you want to write your letters yourself. And so it may take you an hour, 30 minutes, but you want to commit to be in a place where people aren't going to bother you. You're not going to stop and, you know, get caught up in something else. Make a commitment that you're going to do a minimum of 50 letters a week, 50 minimum. Now, if you can commit to 100, we're going to start you off with 200 uh, names 200 leads, but we're also going to show you how to get more leads. So in the beginning, I would say really commit to doing at least 50 letters a week, okay? And and don't make it, you know, if you become, make it like a habit where if you do it once a week on Monday nights or Tuesday mornings, it's really good to do it either the beginning of the week so that you start getting phone calls all week, or if you do it at the end of the week, you'll start getting phone calls at the beginning of the next week. We're going to be giving you your list on the 23rd if you are on the Yellow Letter Coaching Campaign. You come to Georgia next, uh, what is it, September 23rd, you come to the office at 7 p.m., and we are going to give you, Kurt and myself are going to show you exactly how to do the yellow letter. And I want you to also make sure that we have your email address so that uh, Kurt and I are going to be sharing with you exactly the, le the letter you need, the um, envelopes, where to get them from, and your yellow um, ledger pads, where to get them from. 
We're going to be sharing that through email. And then when you come in next Thursday, you will get your list and we will start doing the first mail out. Okay. And if you put them in the mail the following morning, you should start having phone calls that following Monday, Tuesday. Out of 50, with, with the list that Kurt is giving, Kurt, are you on the right side? Can you hear me? Okay. So when you, when you um, send those letters out, you should get at least one, two, somebody calls you back. But if you don't put the letters in the mail, no, nobody's going to call you back. And so you constantly, you know, want to put letters in the mail. When we give you where to get your yellow, the envelopes from, you usually get at least 50 in a pack. So if you want to do 100 mail outs, because you will leave with 200 names, I would encourage you to do 50 names per week, okay? And then this way, when people come call you back, in the beginning, you're not going to get all 50 people to call you back. You may get three people to call you back, sometimes 10, sometimes one person. And what's happening is you're developing the system and the habit of doing the mail out, and you're also going to have people that you're now learning how to speak to these people. We're going to show you what to say when they call you back. And, and we're going to show you how to have a follow-up system. We're going to show you how to, um, you know, put these deals together, the teams that need to be uh, worked with to, to get these deals done. We're going to show you how to uh, return phone calls that you got. And Kurt and I are also going to start the same day you start, we're going to start with a brand new list also of 200 names. Brand new, not, not people we've written to in the past, but brand new names so that you can see us getting results at the time you do. Now, if you're doing the Yellow Letter campaign, the other thing you want to understand is that as we're doing this, it's not a must that if you get somebody that wants to do a deal, that you are forced to do the deal with us, it's an option. If you want our help, Kurt and I will help you to do the, de the, the, the deal. And as we said, if we help you do the deal, then it will be a 50-50 split. We will walk you through the deal. You could do the deal yourself. I always say it makes more sense to um, have somebody coach you and have them walk you through because you may feel like, okay, well, giving 50%, that's a lot of money. Yeah, but not really because when you finish the deal, you're going to understand exactly how to walk out a deal. You're going to end up with attorneys, uh, if you need contractors, whatever it took to get your deal to close and get your deal moving correctly, tenants, whatever it takes, we're going to help you do all of that. If you try to do that on your own, even though you can find all the, you know, all the people you need at George Rea, it's going to take you a minute to know the step-by-step -step process. So really 50% investment is really nothing to the knowledge you're going to gain um, and, and, and just the support and, and, and the experience of it. Uh, I always say there's nothing like a mentor or a coach. So all, these are all the things. We're going to show you how to choose your target area. Uh, again, Kurt, when you're on the call, feel free to break in because I, I want you to yep. share. I think, I'm, I think I'm on now. Okay, great. So um, we're going over the mindset. Is there, is there, what would you like them to focus on at this time? Well, my, my specialty is how to choose the list, how to choose the uh, market you're um, going after, uh, you're definitely an expert in the uh, uh, communicating to the and, and convincing the seller to sell their house. Um, so uh, that's so. What I have to say is, uh, you know, my um, uh, area, of especially, is um, choosing the uh, zip code, choosing the area, and then also choosing the um, the type of uh, seller. 
uh, based on age of seller, the age of the loan, equity of the loan, uh, and so on. Although we're going to start off with a uh, uh, recognized in the uh, yellow letter industry uh, high percentage uh, um, type of um, uh, target address, and that's a vacant. Uh, this vacant uh, list comes from uh, a service that I've uh, bought into a lifetime um, access to of, of Kent Clothiers, um, uh, FindMotivatedSellers.com list. And vacants uh, are always a uh, high problem, and, and uh, Wendy's getting um, great results off this list. So we're going to start off with this list because it's free to me, uh, but it's worth it's a high value list. And then we're going to go uh, over how to use listsource.com to start buying lists. Uh, I also buy lists from listsource.com for different types of um, target seller strategies. Uh, for instance, I'm going to be targeting uh, subject to sellers uh, in my next mailing. Uh, and I'm going to also be targeting um, multifamily, uh, fourplex and triplex in my next mailing as well. Now, those are the types of areas that uh, I'll be going over in the next couple months. And what would you say to, to like, the people getting started? How how should they prepare their mind to handle or, or to just get aligned with what's going to happen in the next 90 days? Um, is there any tips you can give them on mindset? Um, I... I I think this is going to be a, um, a habit or a business uh, tactic that is not going to be a one time like you were saying. It's going to be forever. The last two years where you could just go on the HUD store or uh, even MLS and buy viable inventory, that's coming to an end. Everyone generally agrees you can't buy uh, profitable inventory off MLS and HUD home stores is, has so little inventory that actually makes it past uh, the owner occupant buyer's uh, time but yellow letters door knocking and god forbid uh, bandit signs are the only three strategies um bad and referral uh that you're going to get deals and yellow letters is really the big dog uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. I'll be doing this for the rest of my um, investing career, uh, and I, I want to uh, uh, help you see the value and you, everyone here doing the same. And and that's very key. That's that's one of the things that's amazing about this is we're going to help you create a habit that you can go in any territory and become uh, a, a viable investor. You know, after you learn the commitment and, and, and the diligence and the repetition of doing this. But the other thing I want to share with everybody, in your mindset, uh, I want you to, to, to really start thinking like this. You may think you're in the real estate business, but you're not. I was actually at Georgia yesterday, and Karen and I uh, meet usually after deal makers and go over the marketing and whatever programs and things that we think would be beneficial and on and on. And so my phone rang, and there's an event that um, I'm, I'm moderating on the 20th, and so I needed to have a answer my phone. And I gave them the same number that my yellow letter number people call me on, and so I, I had to answer it. And um, most of the calls that I answered, were people who I had sent a mail out. Um, excuse me, I put this in the mail like uh, Saturday and Monday. And so people were calling me on Wednesday. And uh, she heard me speaking to sellers and said, wow, you should record what you say to sellers because you're really good at it. And one of the reasons is I personally don't talk to a seller with the intention of, I got to get their house. Uh, I want you to really have the mindset that you're in the people business. You see, you got to, you got to, you got to understand that you're dealing with people and the problems that they have from a decision either they made or didn't know how to make 
and you would be surprised the inventory you can come across if you understood that you're dealing with people. So you've got to become a people person. Um, that's going to help you a lot. And, and that mindset of, I just really need to make $10,000 or I just want to change my family's life right now. All of that will be taken care of, but it can be your primary focus. You can't go into negotiating with the seller when, you know, uh, you have in the back of your mind that you have to win and they have to lose. You have to go in there thinking win-win. So when I speak to a seller, my goal is not I'm taking your house or give me your house at a discount so that I can make some money. My goal in speaking to a seller is always what is your problem and how can I help you resolve it? So I just have conversations with them. And I let them understand that I, I care, that, you know, this is about what, what problem do you have? Um, and, and, and not, I got to make a lot of money so that all my issues will be taken care of. So again, that's one of the mindsets that I think is very important to shift, really thinking of how can you make this a win-win and also thinking that you're building relationships. Okay. They're not relationships. That's like your, your sister or your best friend but it's a, a business relationship. And so you want to make sure that when you connect with the seller or the person who received your yellow letter, you're looking to see what we have in common and, and how can I become a friend to this person, a business friend. You're not going to tell them all your personal problems, but you're going to be open to hearing all their personal problems. You've got to really have the mindset that you're going to listen more than you talk. That's very, very important. And, and, and again, you know, uh, you also don't want to bombard them. And that's why we're starting you with 200 uh, uh, leads because we don't want you to write the same person every week for a month. We want you to split it up. And so if you're doing 50 at a time and then, you know, we show you how to get more, you won't be talking to the same person in the same month in your letter. They won't be getting a letter from you twice a month. They'll be getting a letter from you once a month, okay? And then your goal is to, when you have the conversation or when you speak to people, to show them that you're different, that you really care, that you want to uh, show them what you have in common, it's very, very important. And I would also encourage you to have the mindset that you're going to start studying on how to negotiate because that's what you're doing. You're going into a negotiation. You want to help the seller sell so that you can get paid, and the seller wants to have their home purchased so that their problems can be solved. Okay, so you want to learn how to negotiate and not how to convince, not how to push, not how to force, not how to get agitated, but how to negotiate. Whenever you, If you've ever read the book, The Art of War, it talks about the art of negotiating. And if you go into any war um, with looking, coming in defeated or, you know, with the burden on you, it's going to be very difficult. So I want you to imagine this. Again, this is about mindset tonight. I don't know if you've watched any African movies or any um, channels where they, they go ac around the world geography. If you know in, in Africa, women carry a lot of stuff on their heads, okay? I'm from South Africa, so I, I learned at an early age to be able to carry stuff on my head be able to hold some bags. Sometimes you even have to carry a niece or a nephew on your back. And, you know, you tie that back, the child to your back. And now imagine a person who has all that baggage and they come in to do a real estate deal. And you see this person with all this baggage. It, it doesn't look professional. 
So whatever's going on in your personal life, if you are focusing on you got to make money or, you know, whatever reason you got into real estate investing, I want you to leave it at the door because it will work itself out if your own thought is I'm going to drop all my baggage and I'm going to focus on how can I be of help to the people I'm sending these letters to. And when you take on that mindset, you will find more people are looking at you as a friend and they're looking at you as a person who's really come to give them a solution. And when more people think of you as their solution center, you're going to get more people wanting to do a deal with you. So again, tonight, you really want to shift your mindset because you're going to get this list next couple of weeks, the 23rd. And before then, I really would encourage you to get one book. Go Google The Art of Negotiating, The Art of War, um, Top Salespeople, How to Win and Influence People. You know, because um, you, you got all these books say you've got to become a people person. Real estate is a product that you're selling. But anybody who's top production in sales or marketing has to be a people person. And so you really want to shift your mindset and start practicing and, 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 and really training yourself to care about other people. So um, with that, Kurt, is there anything you want to add about negotiating or the mindset of negotiating on your yellow letters? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, uh, oh my God, you are so good. Uh, it's, let me just tell everyone here, um, what Wendy just said is um, expert advice. She knows what she's talking about. And that thing about carrying your own baggage and you're going to have to leave it at the door. And part of this training, we're going to have role playing. We're going to have practice. and and Wendy's going to uh, share some recorded uh, phone calls that she has with sellers. So us IT types, um, I'll just pick on myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, because I, I know that this is a very tough area. I've mailed out um, oh, about 2,000 uh, letters, and I've taken, I don't know, maybe 500 phone calls. And I am still a soft, uh, I'm a freshman at uh, a student at the process of learning how to instantly connect with a, um, a seller. Uh, it is a struggle for me. Um, Wendy is so good at it. You can just tell from her um, conversation, her, her sharing her view as a teacher tonight, how good she is because it just comes across. It's uh, you know you're born one way or born the other way, and I'm not born the way she was. So. Um, I am going to have to be a, a, a diligent student to really work at this, and um, uh, I'm sure everyone is thinking the same thing. I'm just uh, cooperating that um, Wendy's uh, advice of trying to connect, and there's going to be keywords and there's going to be key phrases. Um, the key phrases that I have heard, uh, uh, if you do face-to-face uh, -face in the seller's house, you find some object like pictures on the mantle or, um, you know, something that looks interesting. Oh, that looks very interesting. You spend 15 minutes um, really showing interest in that picture on the wall or the baseball bat or the baseball collection. Um, even though you may not be interested in baseball at all, um, you just... Um, part of your people skills is to show an interest and you'll find that they'll have interesting things to say. On the phone, uh, you, it's more difficult. You'll have to draw them out. Uh, what's your problem? You ask, well, why are you having to sell? And then you get into family issues. Well, do you have any family? Is there some reason why? And then uh, just showing interest and uh, talk 5%, listen 95%. Uh, and so there'll be plenty of interesting subjects the sellers will share with you sometimes too much information and you'll just have to have this conversation uh, asking about things they mention to prolong the conversation yes none of these things are going to 
be short, five minutes, got a sale. Um, often it's going to be uh, several callbacks. The first one you might just learn about them and say, well, I'm going to call you back. I, you know, I have to research your house. Uh, even though you know exactly what price you want uh, to offer them, their voicemail may have left their address. Uh, beg off to call them back a day or a day or two days later, and then you continue the conversation and then touch on the house 30%, but spend two thirds of the uh, uh, time talking, talking about personal or the or their issue or the benefits to why uh, that they may get from selling. Uh, uh, you want to be closer to your parents, I know that. And um, if you sell, then you can, uh, it won't be great that you'll be able to move closer to your parents. Uh, or whatever their issue is. Um, so this is going to be a, a very interesting uh, learning experience for me too, since my uh, forte is technology. And, uh, so, <laughs> uh, so I'm excited about this whole process, um, learning from Wendy as, as well as myself. And, and I'm very excited about learning from you, Kurt, because, you know, your generosity and, and you really care about people. Um, you know more about technology. You connect with people. You you always go the extra mile for people, and I think that comes across. I'm really excited that I'm going to learn technology, how to how how to pick zip codes, how to tar, you know get deeper into target marketing, and 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 just a whole bunch of stuff we're going to be going through. So. I'm excited for the people on the call, and I'm excited for us because, as I mentioned before, Kurt and I wanted you to see that this stuff works. So the same way you're starting with 200, we're going to do a, a brand new list each of 200 and start the day you start and mail out the same way you mail out. And so this way we can be going through this process together we don't. I don't want to just share with you what I did last week or what I did yesterday, or the calls I got today. I want. I want to work with you from from the beginning stages and and just you know help you to see that this process, once you understand it, is so simple. It it, it just keeps your phone ringing. And the other thing you 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 want to get your mind to shift around. It's not everybody that calls you back is going to want to sell or some people are going to want to rent or, or they're going to, you know, um, some people are not looking for a lot of money. Some people are looking for too much money. You cannot be attached to the outcome. That's another mindset you want to change. You cannot be attached to the outcome. If I know I'm not the best person to help the seller I'm looking for, to, I'm speaking with, I don't get attached. If they say they want more money than what I'm willing to offer, I don't get attached. And the other thing that, that helps a lot when you're speaking to motivated sellers is to not make yourself the last person. Like, don't make yourself the president. CEO, I always say I have to go back and speak to my uh, team, my investors. I have a bank that I got from Yellow Letters that gives me everything they get in Atlanta, Georgia. And, to you know, I've been dealing with them now for a few months. And I always say to them, I need to go back and speak to my investors. I need to go back and speak to my partners because the reason – that you want to shift that mindset and not make yourself the, the president because they're going to come at you with stuff like um, one of the things that I needed to do with one of the properties was clean it out. It was disgusting in there. And so we had to negotiate who's going to pay for that. I wanted them to pay for it. But if I said, you know, I'm the, I'm the one that makes the decisions, they would have tried to talk me out of it and say, you're already getting a good deal. Why don't you pay for it? I said, no, let me go speak to my business partners. And I, I had a conversation with myself and I went back and I said, you know, I, I hate to say this, Chris, but the, um, in my business partners, this is, this is something that we want you to take care of. And 
and we'll be happy to close as soon as you take care of that. And they sent me the check to take care of, of cleaning it out. So you never want to be the only person. Also, we are writing to people saying we have cash. If you make yourself the only person, it's not safe to let people think you're just walking around with all this access to cash. But when they know you have a team with you, it just gives a perception of somebody bigger than just you. And, you know, so there's a lot of things that you want to just shift a little slightly how you see your business. And I think that, as I said, uh, Kurt and myself were going to be very helpful in, in getting you to look at your business differently. Be prepared on the 27th, I mean 23rd, come to Georgia Maria if you have signed up for the Yellow Letter campaign, because I know this is a conference call that sometimes other people get on. Um, so come to Georgia Maria on the 23rd and make sure that you bring a pen. What would you suggest uh, pen-wise? I, I personally use a simple black pen. Sometimes I've used a blue pen. I know some people say you want a red pen. But what do you suggest, Kurt? <laughs> this is where we differ. It's funny. Yeah. Um, I've I've been a student of yellow letters for um, oh, a couple of years now, and so I tend to overstudy. My finding is different than yours. My finding is the letter versus postcard doesn't really matter, except in one particular market, and that's probate. Whenever there is a death in the family and the and the children or the heirs, um, that's definitely a, a different uh, letter protocol and letter style than a, a vacant house, for God's sakes. Uh, a vacant house is just um, uh, someone moved away or a job change. It's not uh, anything uh, that's political that needs a particular diplomacy. Those people just want a phone number. It's my family. You'd like to have the more formal uh, write a letter with a person with personality, and obviously it's coming through that you're a very people person, so you gravitate towards the letter. Uh, my finding is a plain old postcard that says um, your house on street X Y Z um, is maybe vacant. Maybe you'd like to sell it. Uh, please give me a call, and I put my uh, voicemail phone number uh, on the card, and that's it. Uh, to me, that that. And my, 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 I haven't A-B tested, and this should be, might be something we could go over in this class, is um, if you study marketing, one of the most important things of marketing is testing one strategy over another. You take a list, you divide it in half, and you send half the list to one strategy, one type of postcard or a letter, and not the other half to a different type of postcard or letter. And then you keep track of... Um, uh, you make a mark on that postcard or it's on yellow paper versus green paper um, and you keep track of the success statistics and over time you perfect you improve your marketing campaign uh, but for me uh, i'm a postcard guy with just a phone number <laughs> that's awesome and I'm, I'm i this is the great thing again about doing this together because before it's over i'm sure you're going to uh, give me so many great tips because, again, I, since I do so many yellow letters, I, I need to learn more about postcards. So as we're doing this, uh, the audience is going to get uh, more teaching on these uh, postcards. And so we, we'll see. It'll probably help me uh, get more motivated sellers and faster. I know a lot more people are coming up to me now saying they are doing postcards. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm always open. I'm always open. So we're really excited. I cannot wait to, to get to the point where you have people calling you, and now we need to teach you how to follow up, the systems to put in place. And the things I like to do are not expensive. I don't, I'm not a tech-oriented person, so I don't go and, you know, spend hours on um, how to – create all these forms online. I like to still carry pen and paper. I spend a lot of time in my car. I make a lot of calls back in my car. So again, you're going to hear different 
ways of doing the same thing between Kurt and myself, and you just pick which one makes more sense to you. And in some places, you'll see that he and I do exactly the same thing. He may say, um, like I said, I prefer having a cell phone number. He prefers a, a Google voice number, but it, it still gets you the result, and it's still inexpensive. That is our goal, to teach you an inexpensive way to get motivated sellers calling you so you can have a conversation and then move them to the next level. So I think we kind of pretty much hit on everything mindset, except I want to share with you, really be consistent, be persistent. It will not be effective if you quit before the 90 days is up or you quit after the 90 days. You've got to make this a habit once a week, once a week, pick, pick, you know, um, a show you like to watch. Give it up or do the letter while you're watching that show. But create a time habit, and, and that's so important. And, and just keep doing it, you know, um, whether people return your calls or not at the, as soon as you do the mail-out. Sometimes people don't call you the week you gave them the le- that you mailed out the letter. They may call you a month later. Remember, some of these are vacant homes. And some of these people travel. I've had people that say, I was out of town. I live at this address, but I was out of town, or and I just got the letter. So don't concern yourself if you send out a mail out and you don't get calls within the first three days. Just do the next mail out, and the calls will start coming in. So, uh, Kurt, if there's anything you want to add, if not, then we will go ahead and open up the call so we can get some uh, Q&A. Right, right. Yep. Uh, I, have, uh, I, I personally mail six times, uh, about every 45 days, uh, to the list. Uh, I put return addresses. When the cards come back, um, we'll talk about that in the training. That's actually very valuable. I subtract that list, that address of that return card from the list. And I continue mailing that uh, whittled down list for um, six times uh, between 30 days and 45 days so between each mailing. Uh, the statistics are that the, the sixth, seventh, and eighth, or the fifth, sixth, and seventh mailing, you will have higher callbacks than on the first mailing. So um, I'd like to add that um, uh, I'll, be o- I'll be offering um, uh, as many uh, addresses uh, that you can consume. Uh, I'm, I'm not li- limiting you to just 200, your hot zip codes. Um, and I'll be working with each of you individually for the zip codes that uh, I'll supply you uh, addresses with. Um, but another thing that uh, um, uh, experienced real estate people do is they delegate. One of the things we're starting off with here is, is tabletop yellow uh, letter mailing. But in time, you're going to find when you start looking at yellowletters.com and click the mail.com that they'll mail a postcard for 41 cents. And if you do a time study, it's not worth your time doing a tabletop mailing. You're, you're soon going to graduate to paying someone else to do your mailings. Letters or postcards. They'll do both. Uh, they do a great job of letters uh, for about 95 cents uh, and a postcard for 41 cents. Uh, and we'll get into that towards the end of this uh, three-month cycle. So let's open up to questions. Um, okay, I have a question. This is Alicia. Yes. Okay. Are we, when you say yellow letters, this is going to be a dumb question, I guess, but are we physically writing 200 handwritten letters? Yes, you're not doing it in the same night. But if you did 50 a week, you, when you see the letter, you're going to be shocked. Like I said, I do quite a lot in 30 minutes <clears throat> because it's about three, four sentences. So you are, if you did 50 a week, 
That's 200 for the month. And you can do 50. In the beginning, it might take you an hour. But if you really, uh, you know, become, like after a while, it's like driving. When you, I, you, I don't know about you, but when I learned how to ride a bike, it was scary for me. So I, I was like really nervous about getting on. I was nervous about pressing the brakes. It was nerve wracking. Uh, same thing about learning to drive a car. It was nerve wracking. Now I can, I literally can drive from Georgia to my house with my eyes closed because you, you just, it becomes so easy. It becomes second nature. In the beginning, it may seem like 200 letters. Oh my God, that's a lot of handwriting, but it really isn't. And like Kurt was saying, after a while, you'll, uh, you'll graduate. But I, I really want people to focus on the basics. I want you to realize, again, as, an, as a new investor, and I found some experienced investors that don't know how to really do the yellow letter. It's, you you want to you wanna understand you're in the crawling stages, so you want to do as much as you can because even when you learn to delegate, it's so much easier to delegate when you can say to people, I expect it to be done in this amount of time. I expect it to be done this way because I've done it myself. So you can automatically know when people are telling you wrong information. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, and that was a great question, Alicia. Anybody else with a question or a comment? Uh, yes, yeah, so September 18th at 7 p.m., that's the that's the time when we come and pick up the uh, yellow letter samples? No, September the 18th, uh, that's standing out because um, that's a business strategies class that I do at Georgia Rio once a month. The dates rotate, but I'm doing a business strategies and on September 18th, I'll be talking about how to build your teams, like the different teams you need to put together so you can be successful in real estate. But you will come on the 23rd is when we're having um, the first in Georgia at the, the headquarters training where you will come and, and get your, 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 your leads and you will start mailing out or writing your letters that night. Okay. Uh, we'll send out chat. We'll send out word of uh, uh, pick the envelopes where to get the uh, uh, yellow pad, uh, and I'll send out um, where to get the postcards. And we're going to show up with you. Know, you can bring stamps and pens, and we're going to have a tabletop um, um, uh, card writing, letter writing, right then and there. And I'll get you your addresses uh, long before I. I'll interact with everyone here via email. Okay. So we look forward to seeing you. Well, definitely look forward to getting started. Awesome. And and guys, you know, while while you're driving around, if you see vacant houses in your neighborhood, write those addresses down. We're going to give you a bonus training on those. But anybody else have a question or a comment? Uh, yes, I, I have a question. Um, I didn't get a text about it starting at 7. I was told it was starting at 8 o'clock, so I missed everything. Uh, the call was recorded, so you didn't miss everything. We were gonna if I, if you signed up for the yellow letter, you definitely will get the, the replay of the things that we do. This this is the last open call, so it's gonna be open for everybody to hear it. Um, and you can definitely get the replay tomorrow. I you all what we really discussed was just where your mind should be and how to like to rethink. Can can I hear what part you came in on? Um, I came in on the part where you were saying let's open up the call. Are you kidding my, me? Yes. My so real concern me. is that uh, <laughs> I guess y'all sent a text message out letting everybody know it was going to be at seven because I didn't get a text message and I'm going by the website it said eight o'clock. So my real concern and is do y'all even know that I'm a part of the class? Or part yeah. of the, yes, uh, of course we do know you're you're a part of the class, definitely. Well, he has yeah, a good point. Um, yeah. I, I'll, I'll hook up with you. Okay. Well, here's my other question. I've already started doing yellow letters, mm -hmm. and um, I 
I'm, I'm doing yellow letters already. My 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 biggest thing is I'm having trouble uh, negotiating or even talking with the seller. So that's that's what I really need help with. Awesome. So well, this is the perfect training for you. When you come on the 23rd, we'll be doing a little bit of on that, but we're going to do more of it as the course continues. Okay. I I heard a young lady who had a question. Um, yes, I have a question. And I I too also came on the call late. But I just want to make sure, um, okay, so the first meeting is September 23rd. What time is the meeting? 7 p.m. Okay. Now, I'm, my focus is postcard. Do, and, okay, the lead, um, I think I heard Kurt say he's going to communicate with everyone by email to find out what type of leads we want, and our list will be provided on next Tuesday. Is that right? No, I'll, I'll interact with each of you individually. Um, okay. Uh, I'll be uh, calling out. I'll be making sure no one mails to the same zip code. That would be crazy. Everyone picking the same zip codes, wouldn't that? That'd be, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that wouldn't make sense at all. So uh, I'll be um, finding out uh, and doling out, uh, okay, you want this zip code, you want that zip code. I'll be making sure no one uh, is mailing the same zip code. And that's part of what I'll be interacting with you about. Okay. Now we're going to get these um, leads by email. Um, will you be sending them, sending them to us prior to Tuesday, or do we need to wait until Tuesday to get the leads? No, no. I'll be interacting with you individually, and I'll, I can email them directly to you. Um, okay. Immediately find me uh, pulling them. But um, our next face-to-face is the 23rd, and so right. but today's uh, well, that's not too far away, is it? Right, no, uh, not not necessarily. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm getting the picture here. Okay. Okay. So, um I think I think that's it. Well I did want to know like what program and I think I I, I heard you mention it on the first call back in August. What program are you using to find these leads that we want? Uh, I have a, a lifetime subscription to um, Kent Clothier, and you can Google Clothier. Okay. Um, FindMotivatedSellersNow.com, uh, and his leads have a, uh, a, their secret sauce is vacant houses, and um, I've, I've said I've mailed 1,300 to this particular list, and there's about 10% land, vacant land, um, but they're all, at one point in the recent uh, uh, few weeks to a few months, vacant. And they could be rentals that were vacant because the landlord was negligent at putting in a, a new renter, or they moved away um, and uh, they took a new job in a different state and the house is vacant. So these are high probability leads. When you look at the um, the type of addresses you can mail, what constitutes the more likely sale, and um, uh, definitely the house being vacant is more likely to be a motivated seller. And uh, Wendy's been converting these leads to sales uh, very readily in uh, Gwinnett. So these leads okay. work. Okay. Yes, yeah, the leads work. Okay. And I'm sorry, this is my last question. Since these no, homes ask are as vacant, many as you need to. <laughs> um, since these homes are vacant, do you find that you have to use like a skip tracer for the, do you, you know, for the actual address? Do you find your letters coming back to you? Like, do we need to also enroll with some other type of service that's going to make sure when we send these postcards or yellow letters out, they're going to the right person? Yeah, right. Perfect. Um, that's very insightful. Um, I get about uh, 20% return um, because the house was vacant so long that the mail forwarding um, uh, service through the post office uh, stopped. And so the card comes back. And that becomes a golden opportunity of, an, of another training towards the end of using peoplesearch.com. Uh, it costs 99 cents 
usually, unless you um, sign up with a, uh, for a monthly subscription, to do, you know, skip trace, people search. Sometimes you can just Google and a white pages uh, search will, will uh, turn up if you type in a person's name, person's address that's in this um, mailer, uh, this uh, address list I'll give you. Uh, sometimes you can get a list of phone numbers and, and one might be right. Uh, but usually I've had to use people search and then one of the phone numbers gets to them. Um, that uh, then becomes a, an opportunity that no other investor is, is mailing that person. But we'll get to that later in the uh, training. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I got a question. Um <clears throat> I'm, like I said, I'm already doing my my mailing, so I'm getting calls. So I have access to you guys um, right now. So if I get a call tomorrow, I can call you all, and you all would help me with that. Definitely, and and it's much faster if you text us and and just say, you know, I got a call. This is me, and I'm on the Yellow Letter campaign. And because you know, other people text me and say, Wendy, can you help me with this? And um, if you definitely on the program, you have access to Kurt and myself. We, we, we try to help everybody, but people on this call uh, that are on this training program, you're a priority. So uh, text us. Be happy to have conversations with you. I, I just want to share, since you said you, you missed the beginning, I would really encourage you to listen to the replay. So one of the things that I'm hearing you say is that, and and I'm a very, I, I don't know, have you watched a, any of my other coach trainings? I'm a fan of yours, Wendy. I, would, I, watch, oh, I you, try to watch all your stuff as much as I possibly you. can. You're going to get a big hug from me because the reason I <laughs> ask you that is because mm -hmm. I'm the type of person that likes to keep it real. I don't like to sugarcoat, but I try to give you real information. So I don't want to offend you. And right. and that's the, the the thing I don't. But when people say stuff to me, it tells me one or two things. And one of the things I shared at the beginning of the call is that if you like, if you're getting a lot of people calling you, but you're not uh, converting them, it means you're, you're you're looking at it as a real estate business and not a people business. So that says that I would really work with you more on how to negotiate because you're okay. not really negotiating. And you're not really uh, building rapport. If you if you okay. were at the the last training I did at Georgia for business strategies, it was conversations with sellers. I actually did a little recording. It's on YouTube now. It's on my YouTube channel, and okay. you can watch a little bit of that. And I went over that you, when you when you're dealing with sellers, your whole objective is to find out what their problem is. And to let them know that it's not just you. You have a team of people. Geraldine. So I never, hi, Geraldine. So no. I never. Hi. If, I think you're in a kind of a noisy background, Geraldine. If you can kind of like either mute it out, out and then you can ask whatever questions you want. We're doing the Q&A right now. So um, the question that we have right now is how to speak to your seller. So as I was saying, I, I would really um, – Say you want to learn. When I first started learning to deal with sellers, I, I, I was talking too much and not really saying anything. So I learned to ask what's called open-ended questions. And because we so want to do the deal, we sometimes interrupt the seller. And so I've learned to just count inside my head until it became a habit. So like, don't don't answer. Like, whatever question you ask, just be quiet and let them speak. And let them speak and speak. And you're listening for what their real issue is. And once you have their real issue, then you let them know, listen, you know, let me get back to my business partners. Let me get back to the other investors on my team. Let me get back to the person that handles that on my team. But I never let them know that it's Wendy Lovejoy Incorporated. It's always me and my team because whatever they're asking me, I want to make sure I'm giving them the best help possible. 
And you can't do that if, if you're like right there trying to answer everything. Um, so again, when, when they speak to you and you're not converting them, I would really go back and, and you can Google uh, or YouTube how to win and influence people and, and listen to that, how to negotiate, um, art of no, like listen to books like that. Because again, you're in a people business and people have a lot of problems. You can't, you can't. You can't get attached to the problems, but you can't make them uh, like you don't really care. It's all, a, it's all about yeah. connecting. Literally, about two weeks ago, a lady that I wanted to do a deal with is in a nursing home. I went to the nursing home, and the time that I got there, she ended up, we were able to speak for like 30 minutes, and then she had a doctor's appointment, and I helped the doctor come in and, and get her and and take her where he has to take her, and then she went and stayed with her son for a week after because she couldn't stay in the home with the injury she had by herself. And I kept communicating with her all through that. And not in my mind wasn't, oh, I got to do this so I can get the deal. It was like, wow, what if this were my mother? And, and my mother were in the home and had nobody to look out for her. And that lady <laughs> talked to me like I'm her daughter. So you got to get to the point where you really show people you care and you really show people that you know how to negotiate what's in it for them as opposed to what's in it for me because that's what they're thinking. When I deal with you, what's in it for me? Okay. And your goal is to show them and then they'll choose you more often. Okay. Did that help any? Yeah, that, that helped a lot. Can I get your, your cell number or will it be on the recording? Um, I can give you my cell number. It's 404-573-0027. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Thank no you. problem. Thank you. That was a great question. And anybody else with the question? Hey, Wendy, I actually want to follow yes, up. Yes, I have a question. Um, okay. Uh, I, I know ladies first, and then I heard somebody wanting to follow up. <clears throat> So let, let's let the lady go, and then we'll go back to the follow-up. Go ahead. Please say your name. Hi, my name is Rochelle Anderson. Hi, Rochelle. And I, I had asked a couple questions earlier, and I, I didn't know that I had missed it. Are you guys going to give us your contact information, your, you know, your emails and the tonight, or is, are we waiting on for that until well, Tuesday? We are actually, no, no, no. We're actually creating a Google group for the people that are on the call so you can have access to us. But my personal email is ownhomes03 at yahoo.com. The best way okay. to get in touch with me is to text me at 404-573-0027. Now, I personally take calls on Mondays, usually after 2, because Monday mornings I dedicate to my women's, um, I have a women's ministry, outreach ministry, and I okay. pray with them every Monday. So I'm usually finished by 2, 2.30, and I will take calls until about 9. Uh, Tuesday, the same thing. Wednesdays, I'm usually at Georgia. If you, that's why I say text me. And I will answer you as soon as I can. But I see the text a lot faster than if you called me. And okay. you can also email me at ownhomes03 at yahoo.com. And, Kurt, how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, um, I certainly uh, get everything out in email so it's, um, you'll have it all in one place. Uh, I don't think it's that useful to send out text. Uh, email, I mean, um, uh, phone number tonight, but my cell is 678-365-6508. But I'll have everything out in an email, uh, and I'll have um, everyone else's email in, the, in the, uh, initially so we can interact uh, uh, via email initially here. Right, and as I said before, Karen is creating a Google group for us, and we're going to be creating a, a closed Facebook page that's just for the people in the training. So 
so you can put your questions, comments on there, and Kurt and I will will answer them daily. So there's a lot of different ways we'll get the information to you. Okay, um, and I heard a follow-up. Did you still want to follow up? Yeah, you you uh, had mentioned that um, you're solving problems for customers as as often as you can, or and then you also mentioned you know you teach a class about getting your team together. So I I guess those two things are linked. So what type of teams, just in general, what types of problems are you looking to solve as far as you know what you might be able to provide to a potential seller in order to get that deal? What what types of relationships are we looking for? outside of just a seller? Well, one of the things that I find, and that's a great question, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a business transformation coach. That's what I do daily. I'm also an investor, but when, one of the things I teach as a business transformation coach is when I talk to people, it tells me where they are in their business and, and what's holding them back. Sometimes people don't have the right teams at home, especially women. We don't we don't always focus on having a team at home. Uh, you need a team of of attorneys, teams of contract, or like different teams. Uh, you need teams. You, you're going to get to the point where you may not want to do your letters. You can find family members, kids in the household. You can give ten dollars to, and maybe they'll do ten letters each or. 20 letters each. So the goal is to build teams so that you delegate more stuff. A lot of people say to me, oh, my God, Wendy, how do you do so much? I'll give you an example. Just today, I had to take my grandson to the emergency. He broke his leg. I went to the, um, I can't even pronounce it, but it's like the investiture of um, um, Margaret Rice, Valerie Montgomery Rice. She's become the new president at, um, um, what is this, Morehouse School of Medicine. Then I had to meet Kurt so we can continue what we're doing. Got to go, like you have all the things that you do. And, and then I'm still talking to people um, all as I'm driving, sellers that are calling me from a campaign that I'm doing right, the yellow letter campaign, letters that I sent out a couple of days ago. So all of this takes teams. You've got you've to start training people even around you how to deal with you and how to help you succeed and the benefits to them if they help you. So it's not just your business teams, but your household teams. Um, that that's what we're going to be talking about next week and how to get some teams cheap. Like Kurt is talking about, uh, sometimes I drive around. I have one of my sisters, um, as I'm driving, she writes down the addresses. And we do this once a week of vacant houses that are not on the list that I'm getting from Kurt or a list that I've invested in. And then I will give it to somebody who finds the addresses for me and, and, and then she emails me and I go ahead and send them a different yellow letter. But it's, it's the same yellow letter, but I just have different groups um, that I'm mailing to. So now you need those type of teams. You need virtual assistants. You need, you know, live assistants. And, and some of the people you need are right around you. You've just not paid attention to it. You need real estate agents unless you want to get on MLS yourself. So these are all the teams. And sometimes when you come to Georgia to the meeting, I introduce people right then and there and say, listen, this is a great person for you to connect with. This is what you need. So you need to have networking, people who go out and spread your name. My mom always is pushing my cards on people. You know, so you can have people that are putting your name out there. You got to keep the phone ringing. You got to keep people calling. But the yellow letter is the number one way people, I get people to come to me. So we're going to share all of that. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, any other questions? Can you hear me? This is Steve. Yes, Steve, we can hear you. Uh, I wasn't sure. Uh, now, if I've got this this right, we're going to meet on the 23rd at 7 o'clock at the RIA 
headquarters. And then what kind of schedule are we going to keep after that? Will it be telephone calls? Will it be coming down there each week? Or what, what, what do you all envision so I can get it in my calendar and work things around? That is awesome, Steve, and and that's what Kurt and I were meeting about today. We're going to be meeting at Georgia once a month. We're going to do conference calls once a month. They're going to be group calls like this, but then we're going to give you an individual call also, and um, it will be 30 minutes or less. However, the, the, the most exciting part to me is that you have access to us when you have a cello or you have a situation and we can give you the correct information or direct you so you can text us. But to get to the, the we're going to definitely do a, a monthly at Georgia meeting. And then we're going to do a monthly conference call like this. And then we're going to do uh, um, something individual. Okay. Yeah, we're going to also do some Skype um, <clears throat> exactly. desktop sharing where we're going to be able to have me going through websites and uh, everyone uh, seeing me on my desktop uh, do that. Skype has desktop sharing. We'll figure that out and get that out to everyone. Um, instead of a conference call, it may be uh, via a desktop sharing. I'm sure everyone's done that. Okay, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yes. Uh, the thing I'd like to ask is that we don't do anything on Wednesdays. I've got commitments for church and everything. Well, can I say yep. this to you, Steve? Kurt has already um, made, put that as a requirement. So <laughs> we won't do anything on Wednesdays. I think a lot of people have Bible study and stuff on Wednesdays, so it's usually not a good night. If we do anything, it'll be like a bonus pre-recorded type thing, but not something that you have to be there. So far, it looks like Thursday nights are going to be what we do at Georgia Rio. How, how do any Saturdays work for you if we want to go out in the field and do something? Saturdays are fantastic. Uh, just Monday nights and Wednesday uh, are are kind of, uh, I've got Bible study on both of those two nights. Okay, great. Thank you for that, Steve, and, and we'll take any more questions or comments. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, uh, Thursdays are excellent for me, and Saturdays are good. Uh, Tuesday is a little tight. Um, I get out of class at 7 p.m. Um, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in school still, but uh, Thursdays are excellent. Awesome. Okay. Yep, so we'll make a know. note of that. Yes. Now, now, as far as uh, my contact information is, do you guys have my contact information? I, I just signed up today, but I'm not sure if you guys. Can have I ask what time you signed up? Uh, it was about uh, four o'clock. Yeah. Uh, could you text me your uh, phone number and address to? Uh, six seven eight three six five six five zero eight. Phone number. Is that Vernon? Is that Vernon? Yes. Yeah, uh, they have it. Okay, thank you. And that's why it's great to have Karen on the call. She she's always up to date with that stuff. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, any other questions? Yeah, um, I know you're not going to fit yeah, everybody's just, schedule, but um, Thursday is not good for me. I have my Bible study on Thursday. So are the are the um, when we do have the calls, are they going to be recorded? Yes, they will be. But um, uh, who was that speaking, please? Oh, Alicia. Okay, I thought so. Um, yeah, guys, if you could please, when you when you speak, just say your first name so that this way other people on the group can get to know you. But Alyssa, what we'll do, because the whole goal is to keep you moving forward. So like the 23rd is a Thursday. I really would encourage you, uh, you know, I'm really into my church too. 
And I would really encourage you if you can just come in that Thursday to to, to, to get that first training because that won't be recorded or anything. It's live. And then we'll okay, work the, out. The 23rd is a Tuesday. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a Thursday. So that's perfect then. Um, I'm oh, getting okay. my calendars wrong. Um, so, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Anything that we do on the conference calls is definitely going to be recorded. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. And if you miss anything, you have me and Kurt's contact information. Um, I think what we'll also do is follow up with an email blast of, like, the, the bullet points that we covered. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, anybody else question, comment? Yeah, I've got a question. Can you hear me? This is long. Yes. Uh, will you and Kurt be doing situational uh, role plays whereby you know, when it comes to the negotiations uh, portion of what you, you've been discussing earlier, uh, you'll give uh, scenarios of what a negotiation may actually look like. And then instead of just coaching it or it's just explaining it, actually allow people to do an interactional role play with you or with Kurt. Definitely. That's one of the things that we are definitely doing on this program. I think that's like um, uh, not this coming. Well, I think this, the, the, the Tuesday that you come in um, to get your letters, we're going to role play some, some um, seller calls, but it's going to be a couple just to give you a, like a, you know, a, a gist of what some of the basic things people say. And then we're going to do, uh, especially with the Skyping, some some of the conference calls. And as Kurt mentioned, uh, recording some of the calls I've done so that we can um, we can help you with that. But we, we're going to cover all of that. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, this is this is Steve Bonger. Um, I just wanted to ask Karen. Um, we we have a go to meeting account that we can use. Is that correct? Yes, we do. So that might be more efficient than Skype, just because of the the features they have on it and so on. But just wanted to mention that. Okay. Yeah, that is. We're going to look at the best way to get it done. We're also working on adding. Um, it's called evergreen webinars too, but but um, I, I agree with you. The, the go to meeting is, is a process that I used to. Anybody else with a question or a comment? Okay, I, I um, Kurt, is there any last nugget you want to share, and then we can close out and. Again, I just want to encourage you, if you missed the call, keep looking at your email, and the replay uh, will be available shortly thereafter, and you can listen to it again. I would also encourage you to go back and listen to the call that Kurt and I did a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we were talking about the yellow letter. I would also encourage you, like I said, I, I have a lot of trainings on my YouTube channel I have a training that I did on just speaking to sellers and, and some, like a snippet, um, which is going to be, uh, I'm going to upload more stuff that, that just helps you with conversations with sellers because I, I really want you to, to get in the habit of, of not thinking you got to pitch something or sell something, but really think you're negotiating and you're having a conversation. And, and once you put that in your mindset, that's the kind of dialogue you will end up having. So I'll, I'll, we'll put as much of that kind of stuff out there as possible. And as I said, if you can tonight, go to your YouTube channel and just put in how to win and influence friends. You can, you can listen to the book on, on there, and you can listen to stuff like um, The Art of No. That's such a great book to listen to. Um, and I, I love listening to a lot of audio books. I, I would also encourage you to, to, to listen to, to the book, The Art of War, because you got to start thinking more like a Lauren. negotiator. I'm sorry? Okay. 
also The Art of War is another book, and all these are on YouTube. So you can listen to them over and over, especially how to win and influence friends and the, you know, the greatest salesmen. And you'll find that everything they have in common is basically that you have to be a people person. So that's all I wanted to share tonight. I'm going to turn the call over to Kurt and, and have him um, close us out and share what he, he will too. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody uh, next week, the, the date that we're supposed to be at Georgia. And if you need me for anything between now and then, feel free to text me. Um, Kurt? Thank you. Yep. Uh, I sense that everyone is wanting to uh, solve all of their problems in tonight's call. Uh, I know that I know that's not what you're really thinking, but we're all nervous and we're all wanting to get ahead. This is a process. Uh, this is just a three-month process, uh, three-month program. Uh, and so we will get to know you personally. Uh, and so I feel this is um, uh, not something we're going to try to jam in sideways because it's just not possible. Uh, so I just ask that everyone, um, this, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that uh, we'll handle your personal needs through the three-month program. Okay, so um, guys, we want to thank you for being on the call tonight and again for connecting. And, and this is a great investment. I promise you it's going to pay off for years to come. And, and we really appreciate you doing this because we're looking for success stories and hope we know this is going to help a lot of people become more diligent in their real estate investing. So, again, thank you so much. Thank you, Kurt Smith. I think you do an amazing job. And um, Karen Yap, we appreciate you helping us with the call tonight. And, of course, our president, Mike Jacobson, because without the both of them and the board of directors, this would not be possible. So we really appreciate George Aria. And with that being said, this call is officially over. Have a great night, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.